All right. This is Aaron Foster, and you're enjoying my mystery stand-up comedy comedian show. This show features comedians that you absolutely probably have not heard of, but they are funny, and you will enjoy them. So sit back and let me rubber stamp these next couple of minutes. Enjoy this person. The success of Sanford and Son made Red Fox a star overnight, a face and a voice a nation now knew. But for more than 30 years before that, Red played backcountry juke joints, keeping company with the likes of Bessie Smith, Big Bill Brunzi, Ma Rainey, and the Will Maston Trio, starring Sammy Davis Jr. Payment was often a few beers and a place to change clothes. Next came the stages of black theaters on the south side of Chicago, the east end of Los Angeles, and up in Harlem in New York. The Apollo, the Royal, the Regal. The Chitlin Circuit was the only place black performers worked. It took me until 1951, I think it was, 1952, before I ever worked in a white club. And that was at Basin Street uh, East in New York. And I remember the opening night, uh, uh, Steve, uh, Steve and Edie uh, were there, and I tried to clean my act up for New York and for a uh, big-time nightclub in New York. I tried to clean my act up, and it was slowly going down the drain. And so uh, Steve and Edie said, and when I came off, I said, Foss, do your real show that you're known for while you're here, and, and uh, just be you. So I did, and the next next show it was unbelievable i mean I almost realized a standing ovation because people were standing up and they wasn't leaving red fox's career has come a long way from those early days but his nightclub act performed almost every weekend in las vegas is much the same as it was on the chitlin circuit and yet despite nationwide and network appearances red's ribald act has never been seen on television I think this kind of show, that, the kind of show that I do is good for television as long as it's uh, in where you can uh, tune in if you like or turn off if you like or pay if you want or don't watch it if you don't want to see it. You know, because people know what I do and I've been doing it so many years, it's nothing new. The following home box office on location presents the uncensored act of an extraordinary comedian, a unique performer who has never resisted on stage or off to speak the lines, the words, that will create laughter. For as far as um, clean and what people term dirty, I consider normal because most people use the type of words I use through the day, but I just don't get up until night, so that's when I use them. And it makes a payday for me. Ladies and gentlemen, the Silver Bird Hotel and Home Box Office are proud to present Red Fox. Thank you. Thank you very much. That's the biggest hand I've ever seen in my life. Thank you for being here. Hope you've seen me before. If not, you're in for a thrill. <laughs> uh, this might sound like egomania, but 
I swear to God and three other white men, you're gonna enjoy me. <laughs> Let me get them out here. You see, ooh, I talk about sex mostly. That's why people say I'm dirty, I'm blue, I'm gross, vulgar, dirty old man. Well, let me tell you folks, that's a lot of shit. <laughs> I'm honest. Everyone here has said shit. If you've never said shit before, meet me after the show and let me slam your hand in my car door. <laughs> See, you say shit, fuck that nigga. Shit, nigga, what the fuck you doing? <laughs> See, these are normal reactions. Everyone grown. You know, I say fucking shit only for one reason. People do. <laughs> if you've never fucked shit. <laughs> You've never shit, fuck. <laughs> I was laying in bed last night talking to my ex-wife's sister. I said, <laughs> it's crowded too bright, isn't it? You, you get all the pure. Oh, another reason I say shit is because I have a St. Bernard dog, but he's 240 pounds. He does not doo-doo. <laughs> you cannot give a dog 10 cans of Alpo and expect him to doo-doo. <laughs> See, St. Bernard's shit. <laughs> That's why you keep him in the yard. Because if you had him in the house, they shit and cover up the furniture. <laughs> My neighbor called the police. See, I got a yard full of shit. They called the police and told them I was growing shit. <laughs> they came out to the house and said, where's that shit you're growing? I said, out in the yard, smoke your 12. <laughs> God damn. You notice I smoke a lot when I perform? Because friends, there are a lot of things worse than cancer. A six foot six black nationalist in the alley with a hatchet mad at you <laughs> is worse than cancer. I don't join no groups because most groups give up pork. And I'm not gonna give up pork to be with a crowd of people. <laughs> See, a guy told me once, he asked me, how can you eat that filthy swine? I said, knife and fork, hot sauce, green, black eyed peas, candy, sweet potatoes, peach cobbler, and a diet right cola. <laughs> if, just laugh right out loud, honey, the hell with these people. Come here, enjoy yourself. Get drunk tonight and throw up in a cab. Fuck them. <laughs> we come to Las Vegas to relax. I mean, you have a smile too friendly, honey. Your yeah, husband now look like Jesus. If you're him, I'm not surprised, sir. I mean, master. <laughs> I knew you were coming. I saw it on a big rock on the highway. <laughs> you see that rock? said, Jesus is coming. I thought it was a porno movie. <laughs> ooh, yes. If you don't like the show, haul it. But I mean, ooh, sacrilegious and all that stuff. I'm not sacrilegious. I was an altar boy. Found out I couldn't be pope. I said, fuck him. <laughs> I'm not gonna sit in the back of heaven. <laughs> Think about that a minute, it'll come to you. <laughs> I'm like Reverend Knight. Give me my shit while I'm on the ground. <laughs> I don't want no pie in the sky. I want a broad. <laughs> Last night a chick asked me for a hundred dollars like it was an egg sandwich. Egg sandwich, just to fuck. Hundred dollars. A hundred dollars and me with two good hands. <laughs> you remember the war, fellas? <laughs> <laughs> Hell, I, I wake up in the morning with my hundred dollars and change girlfriend. A <laughs> hundred dollars, man. I wish I had something on me cost me hundred dollars. I'd cut it off and barbecue it. A <laughs> hundred dollars. See, I used to pimp. <laughs> a 
Yes, you know. <laughs> yeah, I pimp. I had to pimp because I was too nervous to steal. <laughs> I had a good hoe, though. I had a good hoe in New York. She in the ghetto. Blacks, we call them hoes. Whites call them hoes. <laughs> See, them hoes is hoes. Yeah, I love a good hoe. This hoe I had only messed up once with my money. That was the first time she messed with it. And the last. The night she messed with my money, we went to the hospital together so the doctor could take my foot out of her ass. But let me stop fooling around and tell you a few funny stories. I know it's true, though, a lot of folks here wearing glasses. Did you ever take time out to think how far ahead nature was planning us to put ears in the right place in case you had to wear glasses? Our ears could have been somewhere else. But if this meat wasn't here, my glasses would be on the floor. Either that or I'd be wearing goggles. See, you can cut this meat off completely and still hear, because the hole is more important than the meat. You, you, you believe that, don't you, sir? <laughs> you don't believe that? Put your money back in your pocket. See, what if our ears had been back here? Wouldn't that be something? You'd have to pull your pants down to hear what I'm singing. <laughs> Can you imagine what the entertainer had to look at in case the crowd was really listening? Imagine that. Jesus. Mm. One thing, though, if the ears were back here, wouldn't be too much whispering going on. <laughs> I know I wouldn't have nothing to say to no fellas. <laughs> I might whisper to a chick, you got a big ear. <laughs> <laughs> Here's a trick. No, dear, sit down. I mean this kind. Here's a trick. No, dear, I... Sit down. I missed it on purpose. My wife's idea. I have a new wife. And she, she said, Mrs. Fox, try to make it look hard. So I've been trying to make it look hard for the wife. <laughs> have you ever tried that, fellas? <laughs> oh, please. Please, I don't need that. I had that in the Marine Corps. <laughs> That's right. Clap. <laughs> All these stories I'm going to tell you about. I'll tell you what your reaction will be to my next story. See, when I get to the punchline, there'll be silence, giggles, and snickers, then laughs. Watch. Uh, these two girls are walking down the street, and one girl hunched the other. She said, hey, girl, look across the street. Isn't that your husband coming out of the florist? She said, yes, damn it, he's got two dozen roses. She said, I'm gonna have to keep my legs up in the air three days. Her girlfriend looked at her and said, well, why don't you get a vase? <laughs> That's the way to laugh, honey. That's the way. <laughs> Throw your neck back and enjoy yourself. She's <laughs> pretty. Wish I like white women. I mean, personally, I don't want no white woman. You see me with a white woman, I'm holding her for the police. <laughs> of course, I'm no fool. I prefer Anne Margaret over Shirley Chisholm. <laughs> I prefer Dick Butkus, Dick Butkus over Shirley Chisholm. <laughs> Boy, we got some ugly women in the world, ain't it? I love them. See, I love ugly women because they don't ask for too much. Because they know they ain't going nowhere. <laughs> No, oh, really, now, you take some of the great ugly women of the world. I'd mention a few, left Esther out because she stands alone. <laughs> right, Dan has an ugly black woman, too. <laughs> but she'll never be ugly as Miss Roosevelt. That's your boss ugly woman ever been here. <laughs> I saw Miss Roosevelt's picture in Jet Magazine and got a soft on. <laughs> See, I talk about niggas, you know what I mean? Because niggas are holding black people back. <laughs> I know that's confusing to your white friends, but there is a difference. See, my parents are mixed down the line. You can see that, or else I'm a semi-albino. <laughs> Somebody messed in my family. Look at these thin lips. I hate them. I can hardly taste barbecue. <laughs> See, but 
black people are taught to love, but I find it hard to love midgets. That's the only thing I hate. It's a goddamn midget. All of them, I don't care what color they are, I hate them all. There's a standing order at the door there. Isn't it, Major D? No fucking midgets. <laughs> I mean that. See, I don't know what about midgets rouse me, but you know, they look up at you like they, they won't sip it. They get out of my way, you little short motherfucker. You know? <laughs> See, I can't kick as high as I used to, but I put my foot in the midget's ass. <laughs> Don't get nothing around me. I don't want to. You, know, you try to be nice to me. You stand and converse with them. They stand there breathing on your fly. <laughs> I don't like that. I don't want nobody to breathe on my fly unless they're serious. <laughs> if you, sure you do. Let's pause here a moment. We'll drink a toast to human beings around the world. And what makes them laugh? But first, the shit. Water. Did you ever get drunk and go home and sit on a toilet and throw up in the face bowl? <laughs> hey, you thought no one knew, didn't you? I've been drunk in that. I sat in the face bowl and threw up in the toilet. <laughs> no kidding, I came back a half hour later to put some cold water on my forehead. And I reached down in the face bowl. I... I said, God damn, I don't remember eating that. <laughs> he knows, lady, you don't have to explain it to him. <laughs> That's good. You married? That's better. <laughs> Yeah, I think if you're, you're in love, you don't need license, you need linen. If you're really in love, you need gargle. Check up, then if you don't like each other, pack up. I got married and fucked up. I married a Korean, pretty, maybe you saw her. I married the enemy. Because I'm an American war veteran, I think if you can't beat them good, fuck them. I'm going home tonight and do my part for America. <laughs> That's right. I'm fucking the enemy. <laughs> Thank you. You laugh so nice. That's pretty. Wish you were darker. <laughs> a toast. English humor. A gentleman should never argue with a lady. He should dick her. <laughs> Chinese humor. Confucius say crowded elevator smell different to midget. <laughs> African humor. What do you get from an elephant's trunk? Two six foot boogers. <laughs> Mexican humor. Why does it have hair around it? To keep me from looking like a taco. <laughs> Did you ever eat one? I mean, a taco. <laughs> now you have to hold your head sideways so the meat don't fall out. <laughs> yes, it, uh, <laughs> thank you, honey. That's the way it laughs. That's the way I love to see girls laugh like that. Enjoy life because it's rough out there. How are you, darling? She look like my first right. That you, Evelyn? <laughs> Another toast, miscellaneous. What is a sardine? A sardine is a little fish that smells like a finger. <laughs> you never know what goes over you. What's the difference between meat and fish? Hard to beat your fish. <laughs> hey, that's good. Hey, let me tell you. Cigarette relaxation, that's why I smoke. I've been smoking 42 years. If I don't have cancer now, I'd probably have some of eat cancer's ass up. <laughs> A lot of people 
people worry about their diet so they can live. You know what I mean? They, they give up cottage cheese and applesauce and liver and bacon, ham. You know what I mean? Boiled potatoes, spinach. They quit eating all that stuff, sugar and butter and lard, just so they can live. Isn't that dumb? You gonna feel like a goddamn fool laying out the hospital dying from nothing. <laughs> You hate to laugh right out loud, don't you? Virgin? <laughs> uh, <clears throat> I'll tell you about my wife earlier. She been, I forgot, you know, she's been bugging me 15, years, 15 months now for a ring. When I get ring, she asked me, you know, when I get ring, when I get ring, I'd say, as soon as I step out of this fucking tub, you get ring. <laughs> I ain't taking no shit off no foreigners. <laughs> See, I'm American. I was born here. My father was born here. His father was born here. His father was brought here. <laughs> was fishing too close to the river in Africa. <laughs> Snatched his black ass right up off the shore. Come on, nigga, goddammit, North Carolina. <laughs> That's the way things happen for you. you know, I could have been a king, maybe. Who knows? That's right, you know, hand it down. Africa. I mean, when they were marching, people started screaming in the suburbs, back to Africa with them. Back to, I said, back to Africa with who? <laughs> Shit, I ain't never been to Africa. <laughs> you don't send me home, send me to St. Louis, Missouri. <laughs> 4461 in right, top floor. <laughs> Africa, what the hell I look like standing in the jungle with a $750 more ass suit and some alligator shoes? <laughs> That's not hunting garb. I'm here all the way. And I could clear up a lot of things in the country had I been a politician. I could have been my grandfather, Red Fox the first, one of the first black politicians in Mississippi. Ran for the border. <laughs> and made it. When he broke his stride, he was in Quebec. <laughs> I mean, moving, see? A lot of things, people, a lot of whites today, 1978. Think black people talk bad. But you fail to stop and realize, white friends, that Southern whites taught Africans English. Think about that a moment. See, Africa didn't know nothing about this year, and uh huh, and yonder, and Gwon, and get it, and Uru, and Swanee. Not African, and Southern whites taught. They said, no, boy, goddammit, I didn't tell you to get that there. I told you to get that over yonder. Uh huh. Now chunk it over here, boy. Chunk it. Africans say, Uma Guma. <laughs> Which means chunk that shit yourself and fuck you, you redneck son of a bitch. You, I ain't lifting nothing. You and your mama both can kiss my black ass. <laughs> but if you don't understand African, you get lost. You got that? Is that dress on backwards? <laughs> Jesus. The baby will never go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> I hate big titties. <laughs> no, they slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> this is a semi-nice crowd. Some of you folks, some you might have a prude or two in here. But let me square this away for you. We had a sign out front that said, Triple X Rated Show. That's what it is. That's why he put that up. Triple X Rated Show. That means what's been happening. Now, you knew that. So don't sit up here and look pure for me. Jesus knows your crooked Christian ass is in here. <laughs> you heard the song, You Can't Hide. He can see through this ceiling like Clark Kent. <laughs> he knows you're in here. He sees you in your motel room, laying up there buck naked with some superb freak. <laughs> he sees you. He recognizes the back of your head. <laughs> And he knows you're not bobbing for apples. Because <laughs> that's November. Hey. Hey, here's some story. This lady called her doctor. She said, Doctor, she said, I hate to take you this, but you're giving me the wrong hormone pills. Doctor said, This is morning, Mrs. Hansen. She said, I couldn't make a mistake like that. I'm 47 years in business. I couldn't uh, do that. She said, Listen, man, you gave me the wrong hormone pills. The doctor said, well, how do you know I gave you the wrong hormone pills? She said, well, I got hair growing down my chest. She said, doctor said, well, how far down is it growing? 
She said, down to my dick. <laughs> if you have kids, I, I don't have any kids myself. Man. I, all of you, 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 folks, you folks are married, aren't you? Children? How many? Three children, and sir, you're a motherfucker. <laughs> That's right, she's a mother three times, isn't she? Motherfucker, you. <laughs> I bet you never thought you'd laugh when a black dude called you a motherfucker. Did you? <laughs> Man, that's beautiful. Things are changing around the country. No kidding. Uh, how you feel, pal? Hey, by yourself? Have you tried band roll on? <laughs> Take a hundred dollars out of your pocket and enjoy yourself. <laughs> hundred dollars, man, that's ridiculous. Pardon me. My first impression. <sighs> Eskimo going to the toilet. <laughs> Say, there was two buddies. There was two good buddies. And one guy, he was a practical joker, so he bought one of those rubber dolls. You know, you sell them in the porno stores. Maybe you got one. <laughs> And you blow them up, and they're life-size dolls. You know, you put a little grease on them. And he bought one of these dolls and greased it and put it in his bed and put the cover over it and called his buddy. He said, man, I got a chick over here. She's too much for me. I can't, can't handle it by myself. He said, hurry on over here. Before he could hang up the phone, his buddy was coming to the door. He said, where is she? He said, she's in the bedroom. His buddy went in the bedroom. He's in the bedroom about one minute. And he came back outside. He said, man, where'd you meet her? He said, God damn. His buddy said, what happened? He said, man, what a freak. I bit her on the neck, and she farted and floated out the window. <laughs> necessary. You know, that's why when I mention religion, I mention the Lord. <laughs> but he was wonderful. The Lord created the fart. He created the fart, then put a smell in it so the deaf could enjoy it. If you were up here, you could see some of the faces, you know, just from the word fart. I mean, hell, that's nothing to be upset about. I mean, think back, remember? <laughs> Someone around here just farted. <laughs> you know black people care at night, don't you? <laughs> they do. <laughs> they do, black people care at night. I must be black because I got a knife. I was born in St. Louis, Missouri. I used to wake up buck naked and put my knife on. <laughs> I'm black. A lot of whites say they want to be black now. Hell, we've been black all the time. I never heard them enough of you call us a Negro son of a bitch. It was always a black son of a bitch, wasn't it? So make up your fucking mind, white friends. What are we? Shit, I'm black. Because people are colors. Black, white, yellow, brown, and red. There's no Negro in the crayon box. <laughs> that was heavy, wasn't it? Social comment. I got to drop one M in every now and then because I am black. See, niggas are superstitious. You can tell the difference. See, niggas believe in ghosts, rabbit's feet, and black cats. I'm black. I don't believe in none of that shit. If I see a ghost, I'm going to cut it. <laughs> the police find seven, eight ghosts with their throat cut, won't be no more ghosts. <laughs> you couldn't beg a white guy to put a sheet on and say, boo, nowhere. Ku Klux Klan and be wearing checkerboard tablecloth. <laughs> and, and rabbit's feet. Nigga, how could a rabbit's foot be lucky when the rabbit lost it? <laughs> hey, two dollars fifty cents for a goddamn foot with claws on it, tie your suit up. Get the body where the meat is and wrap some greens and sweet potatoes around his ass and feed your children. <laughs> foot and, and black cats. You'll kill your whole family in a station wagon Ducking a black cat. I run right over there, Harry ass. I'm not going to wreck my $84,000 Rolls Royce on no six cent cat. That's bad arithmetic. 
way I figure it, 84,000 goes over six, one time with nothing left over. <laughs> See, cat lovers hate me, but fuck them, man. People need dogs today. See, when a burglar comes to your home and hears, meow, meow, break right in. Get your Doberman that meows. <laughs> yourself something. No kidding, I love animals myself. But the only thing I don't like rats. I mean, how'd you turn around every night and say, you ain't no dream either. <laughs> Look up at me. I've seen you before. When you killed overseas? <laughs> I never marched. You never saw me marching, did you? Because it's hard for a man to get out there and march and let somebody run into a crowd and pop him upside the head with an axe handle. And all he's supposed to do is lay there and hum, we shall overcome. <laughs> I say, shit. <laughs> I don't want to overcome. I'd go crazy. <laughs> Let, let's leave it like it is. <laughs> it's my fifth pack today. It's my business. Gotta leave here with something. A friend of mine quit smoking, got killed by a tobacco truck. <laughs> Ran over its clean lungs. <laughs> like me, I'm a war veteran. I was there. Were you in service? I was a hero. I didn't want to mention it, but you forced it out of me. <laughs> I was a hero. Who do you think they named the foxhole after Hoover? <laughs> I was there. I backed up so far in one battle, I bumped into a general. He said, why are you running? I said, I'm running because I cannot fly, you asshole. <laughs> are you kidding me? It's tough in the service. You were there, weren't you? Where were you, Lieutenant? Don't lie now. See, a lot of people lie about you. See, unbutton your collar and you're twiddling your thumbs. Is the stock market doing bad? I know you're into big money. I can tell big door when I see it. It's like I can't stand poor people. They always look up at you like they want something. <laughs> Another thing I don't like, I don't give a goddamn old people don't enjoy me. Because you're not gonna be fans long anyway. <laughs> Hey, it's, it's a little kid who was in school, and the teacher asked all the kids in school. She said, I want you kids to give me a sentence using the word definitely. So a little girl said, teacher, the sky is definitely blue. She said, no, no, Marianne. She said, when storm clouds fill the sky, it's not definitely blue. She said, I don't know, little girl said, she said, teacher, the grass is definitely green. She said, no, Joan, when the sun shines down hot on the grass, it browns it, so it's not definitely green. So a little boy stood up and said, teacher, uh, can I say something for teacher? She said, yes, Billy, what is it? He said, teacher, uh, when, uh, when, said, when, you, when you break wind, does it have a lump in it? <laughs> she said, no, Billy. He said, well, I have definitely shit. <laughs> Look at me, the kid said it. <laughs> Little bitty white kid. <laughs> oh, I want to mention something else about whites saying that we all look alike. When it's absolutely wrong, white friends, carry your own burden. It's not black people that look alike, it's you that look alike. All of y'all are just white. Look around the room. All of y'all are white, but look at us. The chocolate rainbow. Black people, all different colors. Black walnut, burnt almond, chocolate, chocolate mocha, pecan, vanilla, yellow, mellow, light, bright, and damn near white. You can see that. You know Lena Horne don't look like Esther Rawls. That, that clip. Beautiful. I can handle it. Yeah, I named my second wife. I never forget her. Weighed 62 pounds when we got married. 62 pounds. 
Seven years later, 310. <laughs> 310 pounds. I stopped speaking to her. She walked in the house and I said, mm, mm. She thought I loved her because when she got in the bed, I rolled toward her. <laughs> I like the way you laugh there, you just shake your head so I can do that. <laughs> That's good. Some people just hate to have fun. You know what I mean? They do. Just come out mad for some reason. Oh, nice looking couple over there. <laughs> That's good. Hey, brother, inspecting a head cold? <laughs> hey. <laughs> we gotta we got sing now. See, that's for you know, diversion. <laughs> or whatever you call it. Continuity? No, that doesn't. See, I didn't go to college. I knew I wasn't going to college when I didn't get into high school. <laughs> It didn't matter to me, because they weren't teaching nothing to help me now. Little boy blue, come blow your horn. Shit. You'll break your neck trying to blow your horn. <laughs> you want your horn blown, you need a friend. <laughs> <laughs> they had other poetry talks. Well, 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 my pussy fell in the well. I could drown when I was 15. I was in the well, baby. Head first. You ever go to the well? Hey, we're going to sing this tune that everyone knows. You went to school, all of you. You remember? Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life's my dream. We're going to sing that together. No solos, just blend on the downbeat. Row, row, row your boat gently down. You're on television. <laughs> Once more. All the good looking people. Wait a minute, wait a minute, this fellow over here. Please don't sing during the good looking people, sir. The guy over there singing looked like somebody's shit in his face. Now let's try this again. Only this time, just the ladies. Men. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Now you others. <laughs> Come on now. I know a crowd this size got to be one fag in here. Where you at, baby? Bend over, I'll drive you to the dunes. It's in the closet. Hey, something else I want to mention, too. Let me have a sip here first. Mm. Good. You have a, where the hell I put oil in it? Mm, that's good. Two, two whores, I mean, two girls were talking. One of them asked the other one say, uh, do you smoke when you finish? I say, I don't know, I ain't never looked. <laughs> hey, I had mixed up. <coughs> See? He's beautiful. I mean, you're beautiful too. That's your wife? Children? No? One, huh? Black motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you didn't get angry. Both of us got knives, so it's a draw. <laughs> you want to do another tune? I know you all know it. It's my own composition. It's a love song. It's going to be recorded by Frank Sinatra. It's called I Love You, Darling. If you never have any cash money in your pocketbook during your entire life in this world. But I won't be with you, darling. <laughs> If you never have any cash money in your pocketbook during your entire life in this world or anywhere else, you might go with nothing. Because I don't need nobody to help me do bad. I can starve to death by myself, sweetheart. So try and forget me. And always remember that I love you more than any woman I've ever known in my life. Because that night I went up to your house and got drunk and fell out on the couch and went to sleep. You didn't mess with none of the money that was left in my wallet because you must have known deep down in your heart 
If I'd have came to and found some of my hard-earned money gone, I'd have went home and got a two-by-four that I've been soaking in motor oil since 1939. <laughs> and I'd have came back searching for you. If I found you anywhere on earth with any portions of my money in your bag, and I took my greasy two-by-four, knowing that it wouldn't break, bend, or splinter, and try to cave your skull in with it, blues. B.B. <laughs> King might do it, too. Hey, brother, is that a gold tooth in your mouth? Don't you go to the ghetto with a gold tooth? One of them niggas will dig a mine in your face. <laughs> Nigga tried to rob me in New York three months ago. Can you imagine that? Nigga gonna stick up a black man. Wasn't that dumb? Nigga gonna rob Zorro. <laughs> this nigga jumped out the alley, didn't have a gun, a pipe, or a brick. All he knew was karate. Jumped out there and said, stick up. I got a black belt. I said, they gonna need it to lower your black ass in the ground. <laughs> I want to mention going to heaven. That's important to me, going to heaven. Religion is weird. I was a Catholic, spoke Latin phonetically, but it was weird. You know, if you're going to heaven and they lower you in the ground, if you're going to heaven, let them hook your ass to a balloon, take you on out of here. <laughs> they got facilities now. We don't need graveyards, we need condominiums where people can live. You know what I mean? You know what I mean? I could have been a preacher. Nice diamond ring you got there. Rufus? <laughs> have a beautiful tan. My goodness, even too. You could go to ghetto by yourself. High yellow. High yellow, high yellow. What difference does that make? You know what I mean? Hey, I want to plug my latest album and my only album in the last 15 years. I'm not going to make another until this one sells. <laughs> no, I have an album called You Got to Wash Your Ass. And if you, do, if you don't have it, please buy one and mail it to your home anonymously so your mate can hear it. Because it's important to know about hygiene. You remember Black Flag? <laughs> or if, how easy they forget. <laughs> No, but it's so true. You got to wash your ass. You can let your armpits go a couple of days, maybe. But not your ass. <laughs> How could you tell somebody, I love you, darling, knowing in your heart you haven't washed your ass? <laughs> and another thing, men, stop wearing white shorts. White shorts can wreck your marriage, your love affair, your romance, white shorts. Know why? Because every wash day, all of your white shorts got a brown stain in the seat. <laughs> your wife don't want that shit. <laughs> You're driving her crazy, man. Every wash day, she's down there talking to the washing machine. Grown man shit in his pants every week. <laughs> I wash this shit out his pants every week. 49 years old, still shit in his fucking pants. <laughs> Well, friends, don't do that to her. Please don't do that to your lady. Get you some brown polka dot shorts. <laughs> and let us search for the spot. <laughs> but never again, white shorts. Another thing is important. When you've been out in the street for five, six hours, you can't go home and jump right into bed. You got to hit that thing with the washcloth. <laughs> You've been walking, going to the toilet, in the restaurant, back to the toilet again, on the elevator, in the cab, in the club, in the toilet, in the club, back in the cab, up the steps. You got to hit that thing with the washcloth. <laughs> Don't lay down dry anymore. Come to bed damp. <laughs> Only you and Gibbons would eat in dry bush country. <laughs> and fellas, jump in a hot shower and wash them wild hickory nuts. <laughs> And your cucumber. <laughs> For you unfortunates, your gherkin. <laughs> <laughs> but don't lay down dry again, because when you get on those covers dry, 
and you get to making love, and it gets hot under those covers, and you can start sweating your armpits top, your ass and nuts and everything. You get to sweat, and it's like funk begins to grow. See, funk builds in those conditions. It gets to be uh, turning and spinning. Pretty soon you got a funk typhoon under the covers. <laughs> you humping in, pretty soon you roll off. You try to catch your breath. <sighs> And the cover settles back down and pushes all that funk out the head of the covers. God damn. Hey, honey, get your raincoat. I think it's shitting. Oh, no, it's you. No, your monkey died. Oh, well, wash your ass. And you folks here, thanks a lot for coming. Win some money while you're in Las Vegas. And see you next time. Thank you very much.